Hi, I'm Megan Jacks, Creative Memories Independent Advisor, and I am here with a sketch number three from the March 2023 virtual crop. So if you need the handout for the March um, crop, you can get it on the Creative Memories blog. There'll be a link below in the description, and there's a nice PDF that you'll want to download and print, and you can put it into your binder, or you can use it while you scrap. It's got all the measurements on there, everything you need to go ahead and get started. I always say, though, remember, sketches are just kind of like an inspiration point, a place to start. So the measurements are nice to kind of get you going, but you can always adapt for your images. And that's what you're going to see that I'm going to do as part of my, um, my demo today. So I'm going to switch over to my overhead camera and I'll show you what I've got going on. So here you can see the handout. It's a lovely lovely layout there. It does have that large um, dominant photo of five by seven that they show over here on the left page. And then they show with a bunch of vertical images here and a four by four, um, giving you some border details. Um, it is really a nice flow to this layout. I am going to show you though, how we can add more photos to this to give, you know, if you have more photos, we'll talk about if you need to adapt it for horizontal photos, how you can do that. Cause you're going to see, I have some horizontal photos I needed to use. So I've got everything laid out on my scrap easel. So I'm going to show, I'm going to tip it over here and show you what we're putting together. You can kind of see here, I've got those square, that's a, uh, those square details. That's a feature of the layout here. I've got a, um, I don't have a five by seven photo, but I am going to show you how I made this five by seven mat. This is actually going to go inside a peekaboo pocket that will flip over and show two more four by sixes behind it. Cause I have a lot of photos from trick or treating. And then over here, you can see I expanded the amount of photos instead of just having the horizontal or the verticals that go all the way across carrying over from the left page into the right. I incorporated um, a couple of four by sixes and um, uh, then a square here. So I did have to cut the photos down. Um, and then that did leave me with a little less room at the top and the bottom, but I thought that was a, a good sacrifice, right? I really wanted to accentuate the number of photos and this worked perfectly. So I'm gonna walk you through a couple of key details of this layout of how I'm putting it together, especially this mat over here. And then I'll assemble it um, to show you how I'm piecing it together to help save on decorative paper. Cause that's always a big thing, saving that decorative paper. And I'll show you how I did that. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing I'm going to walk you through is I am going to walk you through how I created this matte detail here. I punched around a five by seven piece of shimmer paper. I have another five by seven uh, decorative paper that's going to go behind it. And I'll just show you here really quick. Let me put this photo. I trimmed down this photo to fit a little bit more inside my, um, five by seven, uh, mat that I created. And as I flip this over and let me bring up this silicone mat so I can add the adhesive. This mat is going to go in here. I want a little bit of that purple to show through of the, for the bats. I thought that was a nice, accent the purple shows through and then it's on the layout it actually be on top of the white but this is going to go inside a five by seven peekaboo pocket and i'll actually have a photo that's going to go here and then there'll be a photo that actually that mounts to the white here but you can get an idea of what it's going to look like and this is a great option if you have more photos that you want to include so that five by seven goes right inside there so you can have um, just a decorative mat. You don't have to punch your mat, but you can see there how that's gonna look. This will flip up and show two more photos on the inside. There's even a little bit of room for some journaling if I wanted or however I needed to include that. But let's talk about that five by seven mat. So what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna, whatever color you want that mat to be, you're gonna wanna go ahead and cut a piece of paper down to that five by seven. I'm gonna go ahead and just cut a piece of black cardstock here. I'll trim it down to five by seven. That's the inside, what's going inside that pocket. So I'll trim it to five wide. And then I'm gonna cut off five inches and that should give me this remaining piece is gonna be seven inches. 
Now this is done with a border maker cartridge. You're gonna wanna make sure that you um, have your border maker cartridge and it's gonna work best with a knockout style. And a knockout style, this is bats and stars. A knockout style um, just punches out, for this one, it's just punching bats and stars. It's not altering the edge, it's staying attached to the paper. So um, the bats and stars works good because we're not worried about altering that outside edge. Other knockout styles are footprints, flip-flops, um, the sun punch. Um, you can also use animal tracks, bubbles. I'm looking over at my set, um, the arrow. Um, the All of our chevrons have been, um, that style. So it gives you an idea of um, ones that you could potentially work with there. So we'll have our five by seven and we're going to incorporate this and put it all the way to the top of our paper tray. And I'm going to punch three and I can see the very edge of my black cardstock here, I'm not gonna punch again. I wanna leave that space. This works with any odd size shapes. So you could do 11 by 11, nine by 11, five by seven, nine by seven, nine by five, any odd numbered edges. So we think of frame punches, we need to use even sides. For this technique, you're gonna to wanna to use odd the odd side, um, odd numbered sides. So on this shorter edge here, that is the five, I'm only gonna punch twice. Start up in that corner and punch twice. Then I'll rotate and punch again. This technique works really well if you wanna make a page mat. You could cut to 11 by 11 and use this technique. You can try it with chain style and um, edge styles. You're just gonna wanna practice on scratch paper. See what your punches can do. Take notes, I've talked about that before. Have a, a little notebook or a piece of paper that you write down your punch notes on. What punches do what really well. But there you can see I've got that five by seven mat all set to go. Now the inside here is, it's a little on the smaller side. You're not gonna be able to put a four by six there you would have to trim it down. Let me take a quick measurement here. You're about three by five. Three by five would fit inside this with no problems, which is a, not a bad size photo at all. So that's how I made that mat. I backed it with some um, a color to give myself that little bit of contrast. I could have left it open. I didn't have to back it. I could have left it so that it was clear. It would have shown through here um, for the white would have come through. And when you flipped it open, I could have had two three by fives, um, one on each side. And that would have been a great option if you wanted to leave that little bit more of that um, see-through effect coming here to the white. But when I was mapping this out on my scrap easel, I decided I wanted to have a little bit of a color in there. So that's why I went with that faded purple that's on the back side of the orange and gold dots here. And that just worked really well. It also saves me because now the photos that I'm gonna be hiding in here in the peekaboo pocket, I don't have to trim down to smaller than, uh, to the three by five size to allow those bats. Um, I, I don't have to worry about the bats going all the way through to the white. So that worked fantastic. Okay, so that part is all done, taken care of. I cut this piece just to the measurements that they give us in the, um, Directions here, it's five and a half by seven and a half that they give here. And then I did do the four by four squares. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, put together the left side of this layout, the left page, uh, the square part with the five by seven um, peekaboo. I am assembling this all on black cardstock. I am piecing together these elements. So where you may think, oh, I'll just do the background for the top and the bottom. I ran into a little bit that I, you're covering up a lot of the photo, the decorative paper here with your photos and your other elements. I also cheated, I'm not using, leaving the journal space. I'm gonna have journaling space um, as part of a peek, another peekaboo pocket, a four by four peekaboo pocket that I'm gonna have. So I wasn't worried about um, that. 
So I'm piecing it together with a bunch of strips. I'm going to put it on the black cardstock so that I don't have to worry about um, anything showing through if I don't get my pieces lined up, that the darker black will be a good contrast there. So let's go ahead and I'm going to start putting this together. I'm just going to pull pieces off my scrap easel. And as I'm pulling them off, I'm just putting them into place where they go. I've talked about my scrap easel before. It is wonderful. So here are my colors. They go over on this side. I'm just going to go ahead and adhere them into place. I mixed and matched a little bit to try to figure out what I was going to do for my pieces here. And I decided that I would just use three colors and then alternate how they were on here. That just worked the best. I could have had six different pieces using the opposing side of each one, but I really just wanted to keep it simple. I didn't want to think it was going to draw the attention too much away from my photos. I've got a lot going on in my photos. Um, as you can imagine, trick-or-treating is, um, it's a pretty visual um, experience. Lots of um, decorated houses in our neighborhood. I'm not sure if your neighborhoods are decorating a lot these days for Halloween. I, I don't remember it being that way when I was growing up, but we're very fortunate. Our neighborhood does like to decorate. And I think my paper might be a little bit longer than 12 inches. I'm going to check that. We might be a little bit. What I'm going to do is I'll go ahead and um, give everything on that edge if I need to, and I can always slice off that little bit extra at the top. Making sure my moon and my stars are all going the right directions. Okay, so there's those pieces that are on here. The five by seven mat will come on here, or excuse me, it's a five and a half by seven and a half inch mat. This piece is gonna adhere, um, once I put the page protector on, this peekaboo pocket will be adhered to the, um, the uh, page protector. And I will come in here with a title. I'm probably gonna use the same um, color here, this white, it's the spider webs uh, print from the uh, Happy Hauntings, the backside is the bats. I will probably come in across with that. I still am not sure what the title is going to be. Um, probably just something simple like trick or treating or um, you know something along those lines. But next up, I'm going to show you how I'm putting together the pages with the photos. So one thing I knew is I had way more photos that was going to work for um, just doing a set of vertical photos across here. And I know there were some comments, at least on my Facebook page regarding, you know, a lot of vertical images in there and that what do you do when you have horizontal images? Well, one thing I would like to note um, for the five by seven peekaboo pocket, five by seven, if you were to, um, you can print two horizontal five by three and a halfs or three by fives, and those could be done horizontally on um, something like this large mat. You could include them in a peekaboo pocket. So there is a way right here, I could easily, if I had some horizontal photos, I could, uh, cut or print those out at the three and a half by five. And I could include four of them just right here. What I ended up doing is I had a bunch of horror. I had just two horizontal images that I was going to be working with. Let me grab those off my easel. I had two horizontal images. So here those are. And then I had a lot of vertical images. So what I ended up doing is I cut down my four by sixes. I trimmed these down to these are five and a quarter inches tall by four wide. I wanted to fill the page. If you prefer to leave a little bit of spacing between your photos, you sure could. You could um, trim them down a little bit and give yourself a little bit of a margin around all of them. I'm just going to butt them right next to each other. Leaving these photos at the four inches tall um, didn't give me a lot of space to be able to incorporate a border. And I already knew with the border I showed you earlier, I wanted to use the bats again to carry over the bats. I've got the border already built. I punched the bats in the starry or the black shimmer, trimmed it to one and an eighth inch tall, backed it with that same 
light purple paper. And then I did attach a small white uh, spider web border, the same paper as this, so that I'm carrying over that same theme. I've got the black that comes here to the white. I've got that same pattern that's gonna be coming in here with my uh, photos. And then I went ahead and I didn't want to just mount it to cardstock. I wanted to have a little bit of a texture. So I trimmed some, I think these might be two inches wide of the dark wood. The opposite side to that is the picture frames. And that will actually be at the top and the bottom. But to give myself the space for this, I trimmed down my photos, my four by six photos. I trimmed these down to um, three and a quarter inch tall. So my overall sizing that I've got here for uh, a photos, I am using a total of, it should be just shy of nine inches. I'm eight and a quarter, actually I should be at yeah, nine inches total height, five and a quarter, three and or three quarters. So there's nine total inches here. That gives me an inch and a half at the top and the bottom to work with that border. So let me start putting everything in place. I'm gonna grab my 13 by 13 mat as I will need some help getting the borders put into place and make sure I've got my picture centered. So I'll put this on my mat. I'm gonna go ahead and put the wood borders at the top or the wood strips at the top and the bottom. As I said, I cut these at two inches. I would, could have used the wood as my entire background, but I wanted to save it. This way I was able to just use a partial sheet to be able to do that. And this 12 inch paper is, or this black paper is a little bit longer than 12 inches. So I'm gonna justify everything to this left edge of this piece of paper. And then if I need to trim, I can trim everything off the right edge. So I'm gonna put the black at the top and the bottom, the black wood. Our cardstock um, from Creative Memories has can have up to um, anywhere from an eighth to maybe a 16th of an inch to maybe an eighth of an inch in variation of length. I've noticed it a little bit more with some of our newer colors. So you just wanna make sure that you, when you build things like this, if you need to always justify to one side and then it's easy to trim off that extra. So I know that I need, my bats can't come down any further than the uh, one and a half inches. So actually what I'm gonna do is I'm going to adhere my photos, but I'm gonna leave the top of them without any um, adhesive up here at the top. And then I'll be able to slide the border under there if I need to. And the top edge is gonna needs to be at one and a half inches from the top. And then the bottom, this bottom photo should be an inch and a half from the bottom. So I'll put all my photos in place. My son was, well, we called him Swamp Thing, but he was really, he had a ghillie suit that he was wearing. And so um, he was supposed to be, he wanted to be like a little sniper, but um, cause he definitely likes his Nerf guns. But we went ahead and just had him be, um, he just went around the neighborhood in his ghillie suit and he was Swamp Thing. In the Pacific Northwest, you can be Swamp Thing, Moss Man, all that stuff, and everybody thinks it's adorable. So there we go, got the photos on. Now I'll be able to go ahead and just add the border in at the top. And here I can see how much space, now that I have my photos lined up, I can see how much space can I do here because I don't want the bottom of my bats to fall behind my photos. And you can see I've only got a little strip now here at the top. So that's really gonna depend on what kind of border you used here. 
I ran out of adhesive. I forgot, committed the, uh, didn't do my proper pre-video checklist, which is to make sure you always have plenty of adhesive before you get started making a video or teaching a class. So I could pause the video, I guess, and go get it. So there's the border at the top. Now the border at the bottom, I had to remember, I needed to uh, keep my bats going up. So I attached that white to the bottom edge rather than the top edge. And here I'm just wanting to make sure that my bats don't fly up into my staying justified over here to the right side. Looks like I might have a little more space here at the bottom for how things line up this bottom edge, but I think it's pretty good. And I'll come in with my trimmer and I'll trim off this extra edge. I'm gonna do the same thing over here on this other side, but it'll be here at the top. So I'll just remember when I'm building pieces here that I'm gonna to have to um, do a little bit of trimming there. So now I need to carry over the same border detail and the same photos. I've got nine inch, nine inch height of photos. So for that, I've got a four by four photo and it's actually gonna be peekaboo pocket that I will put together and I'll have a space to be able to journal up here um, on there. I'll probably use the same, um, I have some pieces of the uh, spider web paper that I'll put in here because that's a nice light thing to be able to journal. I could also trim a piece of four by four journal paper if I want something with lines. So that's gonna come on here. I have a photo that I've trimmed to four by five. So remember, I just need to make sure I have nine inches total height in my photos. So I want it to be four inches wide, of course, and then nine inches total height. So that um, meant that this photo here needed to be four by five because I wanted this to stay four inches tall so I could use the peekaboo pocket. I've got the borders that I made. I made, um, I cut down a border for here and I've got the same to be able to come here at the top. So I'll go ahead and get those put together. Line at my mat. Yeah, I can see that that black paper is just a little bit big. So when I put my piece of paper here at the top, well, I'll probably go ahead and go clear at the top and clear at the bottom. If I need to trim, I can do so. The first thing I will do is put my wood, two inch wood strips at the top and the bottom. And then line this up and I'm going to grab over here too. I'm going to grab my paper because I want to make sure that my photos line up. Okay, so my photo at the bottom, I should be able to line this up, it should be right at that inch and a half at the bottom. And it needs to be, this is my, the photo that goes mounts to the page. My 16 year old stayed home to hand out candy while we took Cody out. My husband and I took Cody out around the neighborhood. We got lucky. It, um, had rained earlier, but then it stopped raining. So that's always a big thing for us to try to battle is are we going to battle the rain? But we got lucky and we didn't have to battle rain. So I've got my photos on there. Now it's time to stick on the other pieces. Come in here, line this up. That looks good. Do the same at the bottom. So there we go. 
I'm just gonna tack this piece into place for right now because I am not 100% sure if I'm gonna center it. The sketch has it down just a little bit so that you can have room at the top for some title and whatnot. So I'm gonna tack it there. I can always add more. And if I do move it, any of that adhesive is in the middle so it'll still be hidden by this. That peekaboo pocket is going to go there. I'll have I, I have a four by four peekaboo pocket that will come here. I love the four by fours. I think that's a really cute size. That's going to be on here as such. It'll lift up, and then my other photos. I can't. I think they're right here. So my other photos. My sixteen year old dressed up as some YouTube. Minecraft char character. Um, I don't quite understand it, but they put together their own costume. It only cost me $20 to buy a bright yellow sweatshirt off of Amazon. So that worked out great. Cody, Cody was really excited to come home and be able to hand out candy to everybody else. So here we can see that going around. I might add a little bit of stitching detail around here just to give it a little bit more oomph. This is going to come back into the peekaboo pocket. I have just a Halloween album. Um, it's my th one of my theme albums. And so it's just Halloween through the years for our family. And so it's really fun. So I have, I'll have a few layouts that'll go inside. I have to at least two, maybe have a third layout that'll go in there for the 2022 Halloween. But here you go. You can kind of see how this is coming together. So um, I got a few more photos on there than originally. I think the layout had five photos. And so we've got, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, 11. So we've added six more photos to this layout and it works great, right? I've had a lot of visual interest here. I can add a few more um, embellishment details, maybe some stickers. I'll come in with the title here. I'm not going to worry about too much because I've got a lot going on in the photos. So I want to let these photos, I love the photos. The colors were really nice. It was kind of at twilight. We had a little bit of daylight to make things a little more visible. And then of course, all the fun details when the neighborhood lit up as the sun went down even more and it got darker out. So I just have to do the title over here, trim up those edges, and then I will be all set for this layout. So thanks so much for watching. I hope you're enjoying the, um, the virtual crop. If you do make this layout, a lot of you have already made it and you're sharing it into the virtual crop group. If you make something and you, you know, you use that five by seven map that I showed you how to do, um, go ahead and share it in the, um, scrapbooking with Megan group. I would definitely love to see it. I see as much as I can in the virtual crop group, but that go crop, that group goes real fast, right? It has lots of great ideas. Um, so you can always tag me in there too. So thanks so much for watching and um, have a great scrappy time.